first thing I just want to ask is, I mean, I, at this point, I mean, I know you guys try to ignore social media as much as you can, but I'm sure you guys do see things that said about Muschamp once in a while. What is that like? Because obviously you guys know what is actually going on in house and, and what does he mean to you? Yeah, social media is just something, you know, I try to ignore and everything, especially during the season. Uh, you know, people got their opinions and, you know, they're entitled to it and they can put it wherever they want. But as far as what goes on in this building, you know, we got each other and that's all we need. Yeah. What does he mean, though, to you as a player, knowing where he's trying to take this program? Yeah, I mean, I got all the faith in the world in Coach Mushammer. You know, um, he puts us in situations to be successful, and, you know, he's a guy that does anything, anybody asks him and everything. So, I mean, I mean, he's a, he's a good guy to me, and I, I trust what he's doing, and I like how he's developed me into a player. It's kind of the same period you guys had earlier in the season. You take the tough loss, uh, you know, Florida, and then mm -hmm. kind of like Alabama, and the tough loss on the road. So you guys responded with a big win against Kentucky that time. So what's the mindset been? Obviously, you got a two-game home stand here trying to bounce back. Yeah, just that. I mean, uh, you know, two two straight home games, you know. We don't got too many more in uh, williams Bryce, And, you know, for our seniors, we want to go out the right way and, you know, we can give her our all and, you know, you got to bounce back, and you know that's that's the focus this week is just bounce back, get back on track, and get the uh, winning feeling back. Is it easier said than done, though, to, to put those behind you? Obviously, you guys say you have the Sunday rule, but but is it easier said than done in that aspect? No, I mean I already put Tennessee behind us. I watch the film, I learn from it, and move on, Vanderbilt. Yep. What was energy like at practice today? Well, we had a pretty good practice. Everybody came in, you know, focused and ready to go. We a little banged up, but everybody pushed through it, just like everybody else is doing in the country. So. Uh, the, the, everybody's mentally is good, and you know everybody's just ready to get back out. Coach always says the bad thing about playing football is you got to wait a week to play. So we got to wait a whole week to get back out there on Saturday, and uh, hopefully we'll be good in front of our own fans. How much have the coaches and the senior leaders been stressing the importance of finishing up strong in the fourth quarter this week? I mean, that's just not only this week. That's that's everything. You know, we do the off-season programs and stuff to get us in the fourth quarter because, you know, that's where games are won and lost. So, uh, you know, we just got to play better, and, you know, we're going to learn from it. And hopefully it won't happen again, and, you know, we're going to finish. What did you learn from the Tennessee film from an offensive line perspective? Uh, that we, um, get, like, we just got to grow up in every position. And, you know, when you get thrown in there, you got to be ready to execute. Anything can happen. And, you know, we play in hostile environments like that, and you can't be a surprise that it's going to be loud. And those guys can feed off their crowd's energy just like we do at our place. So, you know, for me, that's just what I'm trying to get to all our guys, and especially the younger guys. But hopefully we learn and we move on from it. How much has the depth been tested up front this year? Oh, I mean, <laughs> A lot. I mean, every, every year it seems like we have to put new guys in and we have to move guys around, but we prepare for it. And uh, so it's no surprise to us. But I mean, I, I got faith in all the guys we have, and I know we, we're going to keep rotating guys and we can try to find the best five that go. Carry on said that Bain is kind of a cover zero, kind of send the house kind of team. How much pressure does that put on an offensive line? And, and line and yeah, we. Um, well, just watching them, they blitz a whole lot. So we can, you know, we're gonna try to do some things to adjust it and give Ryan some more time because they, they do play cover zero. So hopefully, we get ball out fast and put in hands like Brian and shine them. They can make some plays and get down the field. When you see Ryan get hit as an offensive lineman, sort of what is your first thought? Um, let's just, I mean, get hit. I mean, he's a guy who's going to get right back up. I'm, I'm going to try to go help him up when I'm close enough to him. But, uh, you know, with just him taking hits, you just hate it for your quarterback. So it just kind of, like, motivates you to, you know, just to protect him a little more. How much does him just continuing to get back up, especially after some of those big hits, endear you guys, endear him to you guys? I mean, it just shows what, how tough he is. I mean, sometimes we're we're not in the right protections or the right calls, and you know he has to take he has to go hot off one guy. And he still gets hit, unfortunately. But I mean, it's part of the game, and you know it just speaks of how tough he is. And does he say much about it? Does he ever say, "Boy, that guy got me," or is he? No, he just you know he just get up, play the next play. Mm -hmm.